Are you planning your next amazing city break to explore the capital of Scotland? Or maybe you've got a few nights in Edinburgh as part of a wider tour of the United Kingdom. Either way, if you want the perfect guide for an action-packed weekend to remember in Edinburgh, then don't go anywhere. Welcome to Edinburgh, the vibrant and historic capital of Scotland. Today we're guiding you through an unforgettable weekend in the must-see British city, exploring its rich culture, breathtaking landscapes and delicious local delicacies. We're going to include some top traveller tips at the end of the video, whilst throwing in some bagpipes along the way. So get ready to dive into the magic of Edinburgh with us. Our first day is going to focus on the Royal Mile and Edinburgh's history. Therefore, no surprise, our first stop is the number one must-see attraction, Edinburgh Castle, perched on Castle Rock. You'll be able to take a step into centuries gone by as you explore the stunning crown jewels, the Stone of Destiny, along with ancient halls and royal chambers, all while seeing where the one o'clock gun is fired from. You'll hear that later. You'll also get to experience some breathtaking views of the city. The castle is open daily from 9.30 to 6pm with ticket prices starting at £19.50 for adults and £11.40 for children. As well as being iconic, it's also first on our list so that you can be first in. Make sure you book your tickets online in advance for the 9.30 slot to maximise your sightseeing time and avoid queuing. Our top time limited traveller tip this is a great place to spend a little more time and money and go on a guided tour of the castle for a really immersive and interesting experience. Your guide will bring to life many great historic stories, share lots of trivia and be able to answer any questions that you may have. As you exit the castle in the late morning, you'll immediately be at the highest point of the Royal Mile, which connects the castle at the top with the Palace of Holyrood House at the bottom. More on that later. You now have a choice, either heading into the Scottish Whiskey Experience or Camera Obscura and the World of Illusions. The Whiskey Tour will give you a great insight and more importantly, a real taste of the country's history of whiskey. The tour includes a detailed explanation of the production process, lots of historical details and allows you to taste some whiskies too. Whereas Camera Obscura will take you through optical illusions and is a great place for families and a truly unique attraction. Discover over a hundred optical illusions and mind-bending interactive exhibits. We would say that the Whiskey Tour is more of a uniquely Scottish experience and certainly the right choice for anyone who likes whiskey or would like an introduction to it, whereas Camera Obscura is the better choice for families with children and for some fun-filled photo opportunities. Next up, you'll come to St Giles Cathedral, a stunning example of Gothic architecture. The cathedral's history dates back to the 12th century and its interior is a treasure trove of stained glass windows, historic artefacts and ornate chapels. A must to pop in and experience along your route down the mile. It's free to enter, but you can make a donation if you wish to. And it's at this point you'll be getting peckish for lunch. There's a number of lovely cafes within a few minutes stroll of the cathedral. To name a few, we love the Edinburgh Larder, Cafe Edinburgh and the Haggis Box. Have a rest and refuel ahead of this afternoon's adventures. After lunch, carry on down the Royal Mile. About halfway down, you'll come across Canongate Kirk Church. It has a long-standing connection with the Royal Family and in 2011, Zara Phillips and Mike Tyndall were married there. For the remainder of the afternoon, we offer you two options. You could spend some time on Princess Street, the shopping capital of Scotland. It's equivalent to Oxford Street in London or Fifth Avenue in New York. If retail therapy is your thing, then you'll have a great time exploring all the shops this city has to offer. And while you're here, you might also want to have a stroll in Princess Street Gardens, which offer a wonderful view up to the castle. If you don't fancy shopping, Head up Carlton Hill, a short walk away from the base of the Royal Mile, it offers amazing panoramic views of the city. From the iconic National Monument to the Nelson Monument, there is much history here to explore while soaking in some amazing views across the Scottish capital. For your first evening in Edinburgh, head towards the famous Victoria Street. 
If you can get here while it's still light during a Scottish summer evening, you'll see the array of colourful fronted buildings. It's a charming destination for shops, pubs and dining experiences. Have a few drinks in one of the historic pubs lining the terrace. They offer a warm atmosphere and a wide selection of local brews. Then indulge in traditional Scottish dishes at cosy eateries. We hope you enjoy your evening and we'll see you in the morning for day two, by which time hopefully you'll have liked this video if you're finding this guide useful, whilst also subscribing to our channel to help us reach more like-minded travellers. Our second day focuses on two amazing royal sites. First up, we have the Royal Britannia, where history and luxury meet on this retired royal yacht. A little way outside the city centre, but definitely worth a visit. You can reach it from the Royal Mile in 20 minutes on the bus or in 10 minutes in a taxi. It opens from 9.30 daily and as always we recommend booking your ticket in advance and getting there for opening. Now step aboard this floating palace and get a glimpse into the life of royalty first hand. Explore the elegant state apartments visiting the Queen's bedroom and stroll through the gleaming engine room. Don't miss the stunning views from the deck overlooking the Edinburgh skyline the Royal Yacht Britannia offers a unique look back into Britain's maritime heritage and royal legacy. Now, let's head back to the bottom of the Royal Mile. I promised we'd get to the Palace of Holyrood House. It's the official residence of the British monarch in Scotland. Step back in time and explore this magnificent palace. Enjoy walking through centuries of history as you wander through the state apartments where kings and queens have lived and held court. Marvel at the richly decorated rooms and stunning furnishings that reflect the palace's royal heritage. Admission to the palace is £15 for adults, with discounts available for seniors, students and children. Audio guides are also available to enhance your experience and provide insight into the palace's history. Don't forget to stroll through the palace's gardens where you can enjoy the tranquil surroundings and take in the views of Arthur's seat which is where we are heading next after you've recharged with a bite to eat. Arthur's Seat is an iconic hill standing at 251 metres high, offering breathtaking panoramic views of Edinburgh city and its surroundings. To reach the summit, embark on a scenic hike that takes approximately 30 to 60 minutes depending on your pace. Once at the top, enjoy the stunning vistas of Edinburgh Castle, Holyrood Palace and the Firth of Forth. It's the perfect photography spot to capture the picturesque scenery. Whether you're a nature enthusiast or just looking for a memorable experience, Arthur's Seat is a must-visit destination if you're able to do the walk. The effort is worth it and it's a lovely way to end your 48 hours in Edinburgh looking back over the city you've just conquered. If yourself or someone in your group is unable to do the walk to the top of the seat, there is plenty to see at the bottom of the hill, including St Margaret's Lock, as well as Holyrood Abbey and St Anthony's Chapel Ruins. Now for some quick fire tips before we leave you that we promised. First up, if you're on a tighter budget and paying to go into many of the attractions we've detailed doesn't fit in with your budget, there are an amazing array of free entry attractions in the city. For history and culture, there is the National Museum of Scotland, the Writers' Museum and free guided tours of the Scottish Parliament. For outdoorsy attractions, if you're lucky enough to get some sunny Scottish weather, we'd recommend the Botanic Gardens and Princess Street Gardens. There are also lots of free walking tours to join, although it is customary to tip if you're happy with your tour. Second. If several of the paid attractions are definitely on your list, a good way to save some money could be to buy an Edinburgh Royal Attractions ticket. This includes entry to Edinburgh Castle, the Royal Yacht Britannia, Palace of Holyrood House, as well as unlimited travel on three of Edinburgh's hop-on and hop-off bus tours. Third up, traditional Scottish foods to look out for. Cullen skink, a haggis, black pudding, and battered sausages to name a few or even a battered Mars bar if you're feeling particularly adventurous and need some extra calories to fuel your trip at Arthur's seat. And our last tip, to avoid the mass crowds, make sure to avoid August when the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo take place. May, June and September are nice months to consider outside of UK school holiday season, but still with a chance of some milder weather. 
Alternatively, if you want to embrace and enjoy the festival, it is an amazing takeover of the beautiful city with such an astonishing and wide-ranging selection of shows. There really is something for everyone, from comedy to music to circus, from local street performers to world-famous celebrities. It is the largest performing arts festival in the world, and if you are planning to go, we strongly recommend booking your accommodation well in advance. And there you have it. We hope you found this guide useful on how to make the most of your weekend in Edinburgh. If you'd like an alternative guide to another big city, then check out the next video on screen for an immediate comparison, ensuring you make the most of your next weekend exploring. Until next time, happy travels.